G'day, my name is Lachlan and today I'm going to be building my 2016 NAS. So, the first step is to choose your components. I have chosen a Super Micro Xeon D 1521 platform here, Mini ITX. Now this is tiny, this is absolutely tiny, and the reason I've chosen that is because I want to use the Fractal Design Node 304, and the reason I want to use this is because it's small, it has to be in my apartment, and it can take six hard drives. So first step, I'm going to take my motherboard, and I'm going to put the RAM in. Now for RAM, I've chosen 32 gigabytes of crucial DDR4 memory. This Broadwell D platform takes DDR4. And all you have to do is put it in, push it down. The same with the second stick. Push it in and down until it clicks. Now, one of the interesting things about this board is it takes an M2 slot. So I've bought a Samsung 950 Pro M2, which uses PCIe NVMe. So I'll be able to install it in this slot down here. All you have to do is push it in, grab your fastener, and screw it down. The great thing about NVMe drives is they do not use a SATA port. And this motherboard has six SATA ports, so I can have the operating system running on the 950 Pro, and then I've got access to all six hard drives that I can fill up in the node. The other neat thing about this board is it has 10 gigabit ethernet. I don't currently have 10 gigabit ethernet and it's a little bit expensive, but I know that it's future proof on this one. So now that I have my motherboard populated, I'm going to put it aside. I'm going to grab the case here and I'm going to Put the power supply in. At this point you should install your I.O. shield, which is something I didn't do before. Now with the Super Micro you have to work out which ports you need to punch out. 
Looks like half the PGA. And the metal just shears off with fatigue. And I've got the IPMI port. USB. So I've already installed the motherboard standoffs here. Now because this board is passively cooled and it's 45 watts, I actually need some active cooling because the airflow through the case isn't quite enough. It's not going to get over the power supply and through the fins of the power supply. So I was pointed out to uh, on, on some forum that uh, Noctua 60mm fan has these rubber isolation mounts that sit perfectly on the on the CPU heatsink, just like so, and I just plug it into the closest fan header, and she keeps nice and cool. At this point, I'm going to plug in some. Power cables. So this power supply is modular, which means I only need to plug in the cables that I need. I'm going to install Windows in a virtual machine, machine and use GPU pass-through. So I've got a HTPC and a NAS in one. So installing the GPU is fairly trivial.
try and manage these cables. So the hard drives are trivial. I got these hard drives out of my existing NAS. I'm just going to port them across. The three terabyte Western Digital Red. They're perfect for this application. ZFS has a ZFS intent log and that's normally stored on the pool itself. But what you can do is add a SSD to the pool and it uses the SSD instead. And you can also use the SSD as a read cache. Now, my home NAS doesn't really need that kind of performance. But one thing you do have to be careful of is that you could lose data in the event of a power outage if the data between getting to the SSD is not written to the SSD as intended. So I'm using the crucial MX200 SSDs because crucial guarantees that any data you send to the SSD will be written to the SSD.
nothing is caught in any of the fans. And uh, there you have it. My 2016 NAS box. So what I'm going to do now is take it away, plug it in, make sure it boots, and install all the software on it. Go to Virtual Machine Manager. Go to my Windows Virtual Machine. Hit Start. And there you have it. Windows running on my Super Micro NAS inside a virtual machine. So I hope you liked my uh, blog build series of my server 2016. Thanks for watching. You guys are awesome.